It's crazy, sexy, cool with TLC's T Boz and Chili. They've triumphed over tragedy from loss to T Boz overcoming a mysterious brain tumor. I can't see, I can't form words. It was crazy. It is unbelievable that you're standing here smiling. How friendship and strength have led them to the ultimate comeback. We have to dance until we can't dance anymore. Now, when I was working in the hospital, it was long hours. I would see stories about celebrities and think of their lives as so glamorous. But so often, there's a whole other side to them that we never see. You're about to meet two superstars. And after today, you'll know them in a completely different way. They're the number one American female group of all time, TLC. The hip-hop group behind hit songs like Waterfalls, Unpretty, and No Scrubs. In 10 years on the music scene, the trio of T-Boz, Lisa Left Eye, and Chili sold more than 33 million records. But then, tragedy struck. Lisa Lopez was killed in a car accident. And privately, T-Boz was in and out of hospitals, battling sickle cell anemia a life-threatening disease that attacks red blood cells and prevents oxygen from reaching vital organs. Then, t Boz's health issues became even more threatening when doctors found the mysterious tumor inside her skull. Luckily, she made a full recovery. Today, t Boz is healthier than ever, and TLC is back on top with new music and a new VH1 movie, Crazy Sexy Cool proving that with perseverance, you can overcome health obstacles and thrive. T-Boz and Chili from TLC, they're here. Come on out. Come have a seat. So good. Well, it's you look great as well. As always. Uh, yes, we love your show. I watch it with my mom. Hey, everybody. You do? <laughs> what yes. you What's your mom's name? Gail. Say hi. Say hi, Gail. Gail. Hi, Gail. Oh, yeah. Hi, Gail. <laughs> what do you got? You like it? You like, does she enjoy the show? Oh, my God, yes. Every day. She has it on TiVo, DVR, everything. I love that. I, <laughs> and I love when moms torture their daughters about stuff. She's like, Tion, come here, look this up. <laughs> so she'll have me go on the site, too, and look up something that you, <laughs> you know, talked about. So it, it's great, though. You have great So you've, uh, you've kindly agreed to come on. We talk about a lot of the things you've gone through. Mm -hmm. Obviously, your successes are well-known to all. But, I mean, how do you stay so healthy? Chili, what's your secret? <laughs> well, um, I work out a lot. Um, I have to because I have to keep weight on me. So, you know, I do um, cardio because it's great for your heart. Uh -huh. And then, <laughs> and then you know, some weight training just to, you know, you want to keep the muscles tight and everything. And um, I, I eat right, eat pretty clean. Well, I see these pictures of you. I, I have one that I picked out that I uh, was particularly enamored by. Okay. With these, you have like a six pack there. Look, see that picture? Is that real? <laughs> it's real? Like, oh what? my. Now, Tion, what's, what's your secret? How do you stay healthy? I'm still trying to get there. You are? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I mean, let's be honest, it's an everyday thing for me, like trying to eat better, finding the right regimens to keep me on path with, you know, sickle cell and everything. But so far, it's been doing good. I've been doing good. Well, let's talk about sickle cell anemia, which is something you've struggled with your entire life. Mm -hmm. You kept it, at least from, from your fans, people like me, we, we see you dance and sing, but we never knew that was part of your story. Yeah. I mean, how, how, tell me about how you learned about, how old were you? Well, I was born with it. Of course, it's hereditary. But when I was seven, I was misdiagnosed. But what he told me is I would never live past 30. I would never have children and that I would be disabled my whole life. So that's kind of the story he told me. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? And I looked at my mom and she was like, don't worry about it, honey. God has the last say so in your life. And I was like, OK, because I'm going to blow up and be on TV. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, OK. I just can't imagine a doctor telling a seven year old Mm -hmm. Telling anybody that they're not going to live to 30, they're never going to have babies, mm -hmm. extinguish all those dreams. Yeah. Well, can I show everyone just so we're all on the same page mm -hmm. what sickle cell anemia is? Because yes. many folks have heard about it. 
So let's start off with the normal. As chili, you can you can take these cells because these are like, like yours. Okay. So you notice how round these cells are. Mm -hmm. Now in sickle cell anemia, your cells become sickles. Mm -hmm. They literally look like that. Can you all see that? I'll hold it up to the camera. I'm wearing here. I'll put up my eyes because I'm wearing red. You won't see this. You see those different sh shapes. So the round shape's the normal shape. The sickle shape is not what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. So sickle cells do something they're not supposed to. They get stuck in the blood vessel. Mm -hmm. So, Chili, if you don't mind, pick up those red blood cells. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, a little made a mock-up here okay. of what your artery might look like. So go ahead and pour that through there. And when you pour that through there, I'll turn over and make it easier. This thing goes right through without going. You can just pour it in the You don't have to be neat. You like to be messy. <laughs> Right you can eat whatever falls out. Okay. All right. So, so these candies go right through. They never get stuck in the blood vessel. Now, when you have sickle cell problems, because those cells aren't round and they're not the, sh the, sh the, sh the size they're supposed to be, they don't hold on to the oxygen the right way. Right. So go ahead and now pour those through. This is the same blood vessel, same branching point, giving life, you know, life-sustaining nutrients, and go ahead and pour that through there. But when you try to pour your cells through your blood vessel, they bang up. They get stuck here. And what ends up happening is when the cells can't get what they need to get, these organs down here, they begin to starve. They're not right. getting the nutrients they need, the oxygen. And when that happens, you feel a lot of pain. Uh, you you can, can have a stroke. You can have a stroke. Yeah. A lot of things can happen. You can die. You can die. Mm -hmm. It's serious. And people don't really know. They've heard about it, but they don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Shelly, what's it like to see someone who's like a sister to you go through this? Um, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, at times because, you know, especially then we never really knew what would set off her crisis. And then I remember being on tour and, um, we couldn't go to places like, um, with the high altitudes, Denver, Denver and Albuquerque. because every time we would go there, she would get sick immediately. Because there wasn't enough oxygen in exactly. the air. Exactly. Yeah, and that would you make know? those cells sickle. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So right in the middle of all that, Dion, you face another medical crisis, one that, you know, I got to say for a lot of folks would have just thrown them completely out, which was this mysterious head ailment, this tumor yeah. that was discovered in your brain. Yes. How'd you figure that it was out? crazy. What were the symptoms? I had excruciating headaches. I thought I was stressed out. I was getting massages. I was going to get acupuncture. And they said headaches can come from anywhere, so it's probably nothing to worry about. But they became so severe, I couldn't see, and I got really dizzy one day. I go to the doctor, get an MRI. He calls me, tells me to sit down. I'm like, no, I'm not a panic type person. Just tell me now. Mm -hmm. And I said the words like, I have a tumor, huh, or something like that. And then he said yes. And then my heart dropped because I said it, but it wasn't really resonating at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I really had a brain tumor. And I was like, oh, my God, what else? What else? Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. No. Sure, I mean, <laughs> You'd lost Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, if Tian had suffered a loss with her. I mean, what would have happened? TLC would have been finished? Um, <laughs> well, when she told me that, it took me a minute to recover, you know, because that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was hard. But I didn't want to be the last one standing. I'm like, this girl has to be with me, and we have to dance until we can't dance anymore and sing, and we will. Amen. I'm here. I love that. I mean, that's all of our goals, right? You got to keep yeah. dancing no matter what yeah. throughout so the, the whole process. the wheels fall off. So the wheels fall yes. off. Yes. So if you're okay with, I know this is a little emotional, but I'd like to show everybody exactly what was going on in your brain. Yes. And I actually brought a real brain to show it to you. Oh, okay. A real? Of a real, it's that's a real, real, it's not plastic. No. It's it wouldn't real. be the Dr. Oz show right. if you didn't we're, do we're that. We're going to dance till we're done. Come on up. Come on up. Oh, oh okay. So oh, uh, I put the brain in a skull because I want to show people how they actually managed to, to get into your head to fix this. So go ahead and put your purple gloves on. Okay, I'm going to take this ring off. Yeah, we'll have you oh, my God. Okay. That is, these, are, these are impressive. Yeah, right? that... <laughs> what are, what are, what are, are fighting? What do you do with these things? <laughs> what do you do with these rings? They just, they just supposed to look pretty. Look good, but you could knock somebody up. Yeah, you could do a lot of damage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now I want you to be the, the, the brain surgeon here, Tiana. I want you oh my to God. Actually take the top of the skull off. Okay. Go ahead and lift that off. Okay, I know they went in my you brain. You can do it. You can do it. it. Oh. <laughs> Is that what my brain looks like? That's what your brain looks like. Brody. You got a beautiful brain in there, right. but it's not beautiful when you're looking at it yourself. No. You okay, Chilla, here? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh -huh. Here, hold, hold that for me if you don't. Oh, yeah, hold oh. it. Hold the brain. Okay. 
I, I, I thought you, I thought you were the brave one here. I, well, when I don't know, only you know, maybe when I'm on the table. <laughs> okay. So you, this is pretty fragile. So they had to go in there, and your tumor is where this little red dot is. You see oh, all, you all okay. see that, right back there. So it's hard to get there. Yeah. Now if they went from the top, they would have to go through your brain. That's almost impossible. And this was actually growing just that size, by the way, mm -hmm. next to the nerve that goes to your ear mm -hmm. and the nerve that goes to that side of your face. Mm -hmm. yep. It is unbelievable that you're standing here, smiling, doing all the things that you want to do, singing and hearing, uh, with the balance that you desire. That, that's one of the things I want to celebrate today, is your Thank ability you. to get it done. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you take those gloves off? Grab it, grab it. Let's, let's dance back here. Oh, yeah. look at my... <laughs> you know how hard That's that was today? I mean, we got the eyes got right. The blonde the... hair. All... I mean, this Hello. Took... Thank you for appreciating this. Yes, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> So let, let's turn the animation on. We go inside your brain, and inside here, all these nerves, this is the balance center there, by the way. There's the one for hearing, there's the nerve for your face, and that tumor got bigger and bigger and the worst place possible in this little part of this brain where it's so hard to get to, in the bone. So we went behind the ear, your surgeons made a little cut there, drilled a hole just big enough to get micro-instruments in, and then with those delicate micro-instruments, scissors, they literally snipped away the tumor, freed it up from those nerves, went in there, hooked it, and pulled it out. Wow. They were able to do that without hurting your hearing. Woo! Unbelievable, they were able to spare those things. And by the way, I want to point this out. You know, that, that tumor was in a spot that's literally impossible to get to until the modern era. Go ahead, have that's, a seat. Thank you. So, so when I look at you and I see actually what happened and see the miracle of it, at least initially the surgery was a huge success. Yes. And then? Um, well, they did take my balance, but your body is amazing because you can teach your... Um, other side to compensate 93%, so I can dance again. And I, I only lost 3% of my hearing. I can see, it's a little blurry, mm -hmm. but I'm here and I'm dancing, we're touring again, so I am blessed. Now, I know that there was a moment a few weeks after the surgery when what seemed like perfection turned to near catastrophe. Oh God, yes. So two weeks later, I'm eating pancakes and by the way, they make you sit up 24 hours a day for two months straight, which is impossible. Oh. Oh. I'm eating pancakes and they fall out my mouth. I lose everything. I can't see, I can't hear, I can't talk anymore. I can't form words. And I'm looking at my mom crying, like, what is going on? And she was like, Tian, they told you this could happen. And so it was, it was one of the hardest times in my life, like relearning how to talk and walk and all you know, that. I, I hear your story and as, as a physician, I, I mm -hmm. have insights in the, into what a miracle this really is. Mm -hmm. For the many people out there who are fighting huge obstacles, sh share with them how you did it. I mean, you're a fighter, but there's insights you've gained through this battle. I did. You know, I had to research a lot, and I found out questions to ask, like, how many surgeries have you done? Are you used to these types of surgeries? Mm -hmm. And then I found out with sickle cell, they didn't want me to have old school surgery because my heart could have stopped. But the most part for me was research, research, research because that really saved my life. Because if I would have had the other surgery, I don't think I would have made it. I, I think I would have died in my heart. I feel I would have. You're a smart patient with a smart family. Thank Listen, you. So you guys gonna stick around a little bit? Yes, yes, well, we, we love We to. come back, we have some fun. Down the show, sticking around, be right back. We're back with Deep Bob and Chili from TLC, and it's time to talk about a health problem that affects millions of people, including chili, acid reflux. And before going any further, I got to say, you are the most fashionable assistants of the day I think we've ever had. I'm yes. yeah, bedazzled. Take a little we, spin we, for me. See this? Boom. Yes. Yeah, so Chili's dressed today. It's right. In the belt. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have to hook it up a little bit, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And still with our bling rings. Yes, exactly. Yes, you do have the I want one. Can I have one of those rings? We'll hook You're going to really wear it? Yes, I, I'll, I'll wear it. You know what? I'm going to put this on for a second. Just a little okay. bit. Okay. I'll wear it just for a little bit of the segment here. Okay, cool. Sure. Can't Boom. wear these in surgery too well. There you go. There we are. All right. So. Acid reflux. Probably, you know, 20 million Americans have it. You're one of them. Describe I am, it to me. I am. First of all, I hate it. I wish I could get a, a whole new everything in there. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't, you know, have anything acidic. Um, when I was pregnant with my son, oh, it got worse. You know, that's pretty common because the hormones relax and that. That's when I had it. Yeah. Both, oh, you had to. Yeah, my daughter also? has it really bad. 
She had silent acid reflux. She stopped breathing from it when she was a baby because oh no would clog her Absolutely. air passage. But I had it when I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's good she, now. Yeah, she's yeah. <laughs> control diet. That's, you know. Has anyone ever gone down with a scope and looked in your stomach? Yes. Good. I, 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 I had that done, and I mean, it's nothing they can do besides just give me medicine all the time. Well, you know what? I'm going to say something right now. There are things we can do. I'm going to go through a couple right now. Okay. But some of these yeah. are the most important things you're going to listen mm -hmm. to. All right. So I got a little demonstration for you. Come okay. on back here. All right. Uh, Tiana, you go to that side. I built you a esophagus stomach combo. Oh. All right. Now, here's how it works. Okay. But by the way, I made this so you understand how your own body works. Okay. So, Tiana, you're going to represent the mouth. You got okay. those beautiful lips that I put on here for you. <laughs> yeah. so go ahead and throw some oranges down there. That's you know, oranges. Acid. Can, it's got acid. You toss those babies down there, oh, and they I run down to guys. the stomach. I miss okay. That's watches. perfect. Now, I want you, if you don't mind, maybe take those shoes off so you don't trip as you walk into the stomach. Okay. If you trip, and I'm she's got purple, look, <laughs> she's got green polish on to match. I do. Yeah. Now, normally, as, a, as part of digestion, when the stuff comes down to the stomach from the mouth, in this case, oranges, there's a sphincter. Right? And this sphincter actually will block any acid from getting out of the stomach and coming back up into the esophagus. Because notice, there's not much of an angle here. You're pretty much flat. So go ahead right. and try to push some acid out of there. And so she's pushing, pushing. Pushing, not much happens. A nope. right? little bit comes up, but it doesn't have much of an impact because of this blockage. But what sometimes happens is our sphincter doesn't work well. It happens for a bunch of different reasons we're mm -hmm. gonna talk about. When that sphincter goes away, go ahead and push away. And this stuff, it goes. It goes way up there. It goes to the back of the throat. And, and you know, Tia, you mentioned that your daughter had this issue. That acid can go up there. It can burn your vocal cords. Which oh, is like no, people... exactly. Yes, it does that. Because I, I had to be on voice rest. I had to change my diet, everything, because I couldn't sing. Because the acid was burning your vocal cords. It was cords. burning my vocal cords. Your esophagus, too, right? Yeah. And that well, gives rise to other problems like cancer, these topics, stuff you don't want to get into, which is why I worry about being on, people being on pills their whole life. Right. So come on over here. Okay. I don't want to be. No, we don't want that for sure. So step on out. I'm going to walk and talk a little bit about you. Put, you sure put your shoes on. on. I know. I'm short again. Right. <laughs> That's the cool thing about being short, because I can we'll be, be tall when I want to. Yeah, she can be two girls at once. All right. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right. So come on over here. Okay. We're going to go into the truth, too, where we have a lot of facts. You can stand right there. Okay. So in, in here, I'm going to put up the, the couple things you probably already know. You know, we already talked about acidic foods, like citrus mm -hmm. foods bothering you. Right. Soda is a big no-no. Yeah, I don't okay. do that. Caffeinated, by those abs, you can't be drinking soda because yeah. you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> right. Caffeinated foods, surprisingly for a lot of people. Oh, Spicy foods. Which is so good. I know, it tastes so good. Every now and then, I have to. I just, I need it. Yeah. You need it. You know? <laughs> I didn't know fatty foods, though. Yeah, fatty foods are a surprise for a lot of people because the fatty foods keep you full for longer. And so your stomach doesn't push the acid through with the food, and therefore there's more of it to regurgitate back up again. Oh. So let's go over one thing I mentioned. See how flat that is if you look at it from the angle here? Yes. Okay, so a subtle thing you can do is put the head up a little bit. So when you sleep at night, do you try to elevate your head? I have like a gajillion pillows behind me, mm -hmm. and, but my neck. <laughs> <laughs> you know. you. Yeah, so it's they have done stuff. studies looking at people who put pillows under their head mm -hmm. to try to avoid reflux. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. You know why it doesn't work? Why? Because we find a way to roll off those pillows. So here's my best advice to you. Okay. Take a couple books. Mm -hmm. Put them under the headstand, the headboard, or your mattress. What you want is the entire bed to be up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Elevate a little bit. About four to six mm -hmm. inches. Doesn't take much to change that angle over there. You, there's no reason for you to be on a pill the rest of your life. Frankly, if you had to be, I'd rather have one of those minimally invasive procedures just to lift the stomach up a tiny bit. Can you do that? Yes. For me? We can have it. That, 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 we can do that operation a lot. I'm serious. Yes. <laughs> if you want that done, we'll do that. But, but you should. But you not. would have to do it. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll do it on a Thursday. Okay. We'll do it. All right. <laughs> Committing to surgery. Okay. Uh, oatmeal is great. Uh, it, I love them. It, yeah, it actually soothes the stomach, mm -hmm. so it helps us cope with the reflux that we may have. I don't know if you guys eat oatmeal much. I do. Yes, we yeah. ate breakfast today yeah. together. Oh, I like with this. So I like this. Ah. I like this news woman. All right, fantastic snack in the afternoon, by the way. And there's a home remedy that I've heard of from more viewers than just about any other, which is apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. I got to say, as doctors, we don't understand why it works, but it does. Mm -hmm. You cut half and half apple cider vinegar with water. Okay. And then. But that much? You don't have to have that much. Oh. Ooh. You just take a couple sips of it, see if it soothes. Give, me, give it a taste, see if you like it. You taste. I've had some. I'll drink it out of the bottle. It's tart, but I can take it. You can take it. Let's see if Ooh. Chase can deal with it. My daughter. Ooh. Oh my gosh! If you oh. can, if you can do that, I can drink. No, no, don't, don't. You know what I do? Actually, here's the truth. 
Oh, honey. oh, I feel it. It's going down the burn. <laughs> you know, I would put a little honey in it. Okay. That cuts warm. a little bit of that, yeah, a little, a little bit of that warmth <laughs> that you don't want to have. That's a good kind of warmth. <laughs> I have thoroughly adored beating both of you. Aww. Aww. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, these wonderful women, they got a great movie. It's called the TLC Movie. It's on Monday night on VH1, and their new movie soundtrack album is out now. It is kick ass. Be right back. <laughs> You couldn't even breathe. I was in the hospital for four months. All new Oz, TLC's t -Boz, her courageous fight. I've never been this vulnerable. And her devastating loss. It's an iconic music video moment from mega music group TLC. You're all excited about it. Remember Waterfalls? It was a pop hit with a very serious warning that chasing ambition can sometimes come with consequences. It's a lesson Tian t -Boz Watkins knows all too well from an unexpected brain tumor to a lifelong battle with sickle cell anemia and the untimely passing of her beloved bandmate, Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Tiana is ready to reveal the source of her strength with you. You guys excited? Yes? Come on out, Tian! It was wonderful. Thank you so much. I, I felt like dancing when I saw that picture of Waterfall. Yeah, I love to dance. Go back. Hey, we go like this. Yeah. How many times did you get dance? it right? <laughs> you do that video in one take? Uh, no, you know, we were out in the water at 4.30 in the morning. That was a hard video to shoot. It was three days. And we shot at Universal where they shot Jaws, so it was <laughs> Oh my goodness. All you thought about was a big claw. <laughs> So speaking of sharks and deadly encounters, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, last time you were here, you had just had your procedure for your brain tumor. Yes. How's that going? I am great. Oh my goodness. I have to check it every year, but I'm, I'm great. Yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. yeah she, had, she had a tumor behind her ear, and it's the kind of tumor that can do a lot of damage if they don't get it out the right way. I mean, anything in the brain, you figure it's gonna be tight. Yeah. On the other hand, you've got sickle cell anemia, which you've had your whole life. Mm -hmm. You're told, I'm, I'm told at age seven, mm -hmm that you probably wouldn't live past 30. Right. Which back then was probably reasonable advice to give a, a little girl mm -hmm. and to her family. So how, how do you hear that and then go on to become the pop megastar you became? The day he told me that, because he also said I would never have kids and I would be disabled my whole life. And I looked at my mom because my dream was always to sing. And so she looked at me and she said, God has the last say so. We'll talk in the car. So I really credit my mother because she has somebody, a higher power with her. Yeah. yeah we all do. <laughs> yeah. This book is fantastic. Now, I just point it's, it's called A Sick Life. Mm -hmm. Could be a sickle life, by the way. But, <laughs> I never thought of that. That's yeah. good, yes. But uh, it's, it's a sick life because you've had illness, but it's been mm -hmm. a sick, good life, too. Yes. You've done some pretty awesome, outrageous stuff. So can, can I read this from the book? Because you have so many Americans, over 100 million living with chronic pain. Yeah. So I want to talk about that for a second. Looking for folks who are looking for a way out, listen to this, see if it describes you. You describe your pain like knives stabbing you over and over in your joints. And then you write that you have to gasp for air. You, you just, it hurts so bad you couldn't even breathe. Right. Now, how do you cope with that intensity of pain? Really, it's hard because um, sometimes you're in so much pain, you're delirious. I, like, I don't know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I have to rely on my friends, my mom, and my family to tell me like what's going on or where I'm at right now. But... Um, I get hospitalized, medication, I pray a lot, and um, I fight for my kids. Yeah. Well, we've made a lot of advances, in part because people who are courageous activists like you stood out, but let's show everybody what we're talking yeah, about. absolutely. This is a disease that is happening in your blood, and I'm gonna show you normal blood, and then okay. I'm gonna show you yours. So, normal blood cells, you see how these up there round like this? Right? Forget about this thing. This is a white blood cell. We're not worried about that. But these really, these are red blood cells. Mm -hmm. And people who have normal blood, these cells, they bounce around. They're going like this, sort of like you dancing, right? Yeah. They're going back and forth. They're going wherever they want to go. And nothing blocks them because they're circles. They're used to sliding and bending and waving through capillaries. Now, instead of having these perfect circles, imagine if you had sickle cell anemia. And this shows you what happens. See, there's a nice circle here, but what happened here or here? Mm -hmm. You see it's shaped like a sickle, like a, like a crescent moon? Yeah. Right? So imagine if you had a cell like that, another one down here that's shaped like that. These guys, right, they lock up. 
Mm -hmm. And when they lock up, they can't move back and forth and they can't get through the capillary. They clump and then they literally clump to each other and they're all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. So there's no way for these cells to go through. You know that, but yeah. for the average person, think about what happens if all of a sudden the blood supply to your finger clots off because of these. You can have a ton of pain there. Yeah. It's like someone put a tourniquet and blocked off the blood or to your ear or to your knee or some other part of your body, which is something that you've, I guess, gotten used to coping with because it must come up in unpredictable times. Yeah, I have a high tolerance for pain, but that's not always good because sometimes I don't realize how sick I am. So yeah. I've started paying more attention to my body now. Well, it's a good thing to do. And see, the thing is, these issues, most mm -hmm. of us sort of sweep away, pretend it's not happening. Mm -hmm. You become an advocate for people living with sickle cell. So for all those folks who want to understand what's the secret to making it happen? I really mean this when I say when you think sick and talk sick, that negative energy, your mindset and your willpower to live is, is, is very important. But you have to be your own advocate because you're the only person that can convey what's going on. Mm -hmm. My cousin, he didn't live and he actually died exactly when the doctor said so because he used to wait around to be sick. Me, I'm going to live my life. I'm not going to let a disease take over me. I'm not defined by that. So be your own advocate. Learn about your body because what worked for my cousin didn't work for me. You have to know your body and that's so important. We're back with Tian. Chibaz walked in from the legendary music group TLC. On Tian's new book, she writes about her band member Lisa Left Eye Lopez and the deadly 2002 Jeep accident in Honduras that cost her life. Oh, it's a terrible wreck. Well, when was the last time you saw Lisa? I was, um, we were working on the 3D album at the time and I got sick, really sick. I was in the hospital for four months. And at the time we were mad at one another. So she sent me plants every day. And on the fourth day, I heard this loud voice. I'm coming to see Tian. And I was like, that's her. So when I got the first plant, I knew we had already made up, but she came to see me to make sure that we were okay. What, what would you fight about? Was it small stuff and then she come in? I mean, how do you? I, what makes you fight that much that you have to have that much of a mend? It was, oh, oh my goodness. If you knew Lisa, you would know why. <laughs> I'm stubborn, she's stubborn, but um, it was over music because we had a contractual obligation to finish our album and she started one with Suge Knight as a rapper at the same time. So I never cared that she wanted to go solo. It was how she went about it and the time that she chose to do it. And so when I told her what I thought, she got mad. And then she came to me and was kind of like, you were right and I'm sorry. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. A lot of folks have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. She's like a sister to you. Mm -hmm. So how do you get past that? I mean, you've, you've, the pain is one thing, the physical issues, but then the mental loss is a whole separate level. You know, it's crazy because I've lost my grandmother, my aunt, and my cousin, but um, honestly, I didn't get to grieve the way a person should with Lisa because I had to be forced to deal with it with the public. And it just... I can't give you an answer of how I dealt with it because I kind of still do, but I've tried to turn it since it's been almost 15 years. I celebrate her life instead of staying down. You know, she died the day before my birthday. Thank you. <laughs> when do you miss her the most? When we're on stage. I miss her a lot, just period, because we're still TLC. I'm never going to replace her. We are never going to put an L there. She's still, we built this together. We have history, we have a catalog of music, and she still rocks her own part, and she lives throughout the music when we're touring, and it's just gonna stay that way. It's TLC forever, just like she said. <laughs> <laughs> your, your music has allowed you mm -hmm. and your fans to sort of go through the ups and downs of life. Yeah. Do you feel like it's been therapeutic for you? This book was therapeutic because honestly, I'm not open. I'm, I've never been this vulnerable to tell people like, the, the darker sides of my life and, and that part where, you know, when you're fighting for your life and you want to live, I've never shared that with anyone. So it's therapeutic for me, but I'm also nervous because <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, now I'm really open now for real. Like, it's all out there. I put the good, the bad, the ugly, everything you want to know. It made me who I am today and I learned and I grew from it, but it's out there in what this is, book. What is a single, and it's very well written, by the way. So, you. you know, if you like it, which you will, give it to a friend. It's, it's of that caliber. What is the, the one secret you've wandered into? The one unexpected place of, of power, of resilience that's allowed you to get past the darkest moments? When I'm sick, and this sounds crazy to some people maybe, but I take myself to this peaceful place. I love water. 
So I envision the most peaceful place I could ever be, and it's this stream, and it's a big body of water, beautiful trees, and it's like waterfalls, and I just put myself there. I don't really dwell on the past. I move forward. I never look back. One thing you've done is create a beautiful family. Thank you. It seems like much of your life has been designed to thwart that doctor all those years ago. So you've got a 16-year-old beautiful daughter. You just yeah. adopted a little boy. Yes, right. from birth, my Chancy pants. The Chancy pants. Look at, look at him. <laughs> that is a cute kid. So he how is are, awesome. So how do the kids change your outlook on life? They saved my life at two separate times. They did? How so? I, um, <laughs> I hate to cry, but um, my daughter gave me a reason to fight because I had someone to live for and my son. He just came in my life at the right time. So I fight to live for my kids, basically. So it gives me the willpower to keep going because I have to be here. They need me and I want to raise them. I want to be a grandmother and they're my everything. Your 16 year old must know how much you love her. She better. <laughs> <laughs> right. She better. Yeah, check out Tihana's new book, A Sick Life. Now, you know what? They love you so much. Do we have enough books, you think? Absolutely. I hope you guys <laughs> You all going home with Tihana's book. Enjoy it and share it. We'll be right back. Sugar because I'm a sugar crackhead, meaning I just have to have sweets and it's so bad for you, but I'm addicted to sugar. It's true. My book is the best book I've read lately, A Sick Life, yeah, by Tian T. Mouse Watkins. I heard she's pretty cool. My go-to karaoke song is Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Because I, in my head, I'm Kurt Cobain all the time. Hello. And I really, I'm like, I love that game. Like, rock band. Oh, yeah. So, smells like Teen Spirit. Well, everyone who doesn't know me, I have sickle cell disease. So that cause is near and dear to me. I'm the national spokesperson. And I actually have the disease. So I'm fighting for myself as well as others to spread awareness and find a cure. So, sickle cell. Ability to read minds, because I need to know what some people are thinking so I can catch them in a lie before they say it or bust them out when they lie. Like, everything that happened in time happened already and I wouldn't want to repeat that. So, reading minds, yeah. 